Hi, this is Johan Sapnil Bharti and we are here at Open Source Summit in Seattle. And today we have with us Ildiko Vansha, Director of Community at Open Infra. Ildiko, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. It's my pleasure to host you again. Tell us what's new at Open Infra Foundation. There are a lot of things that are new at the Open Infra Foundation. A lot of our projects had new releases. OpenStack Caracal just came out. Um, Kata Containers is working on the 3.4.0 uh, release. And and what I'm most excited about is I'm a community manager for Starling X and the project had its 9.0 release coming out last week, which is super exciting. Can you talk about what are some of the core critical projects that are there? Of course, OpenStack is there as well. The scope of the Open Infra Foundation is really software infrastructure. So um, that is in the heart of all modern infrastructure stack. So in that sense, if you will, all our projects are in that critical space. And besides OpenStack, um, we have Starling X, which is a distributed cloud platform. And what is very uh, unique about Starling X is that it takes um, well-known open source projects like OpenStack, Kubernetes, and many others, integrates into one package, and you can deploy it as a geographically distributed system. We also have Kata containers, which is a secure container runtime, which then you can put on top of the platform that you just uh, deployed, and you will have containers uh, which also provide you with isolation because, because Kata containers provides you with a fusion between virtual machines and containers containers, so it puts a container inside a virtual machine for you. So uh, that one is also another great technology that I think is even more crucial to mention and look into because security is something that is in the focal point of conversations today for a good reason. Can you also talk about the, the world we are living in today, you know, it's of course cloud-based. Uh, we talk a lot about LLMs these days, of course we sometimes talk about Web3 technologies, Edge is big use case. Uh, we talk about EVs. Uh, we talk about solar and all those things. So the world is changing around us. How is Open Infra Foundation, your own vision, your own projects are changing with this world? Some of our projects are in that, as you mentioned, boring phase. So um, you deploy them and they just work. Like we had the project teams gathering event last week with uh, contributors and users of all of our projects coming together and discussing um, everything that's related to to their projects, feedback, use cases, and all, and all these kind of things. And I remember one of the Starling X conversations about like you know what's unique about Starling X, and and one of the users was speaking up like. Well, it just works, you know? Like, if you want to build a cloud from all the bits and pieces, Kubernetes, the open tofu, OpenStack, the Linux kernel, and the million dependencies that these big ones are bringing in, it takes weeks. And it's really complex to put that together. And he said that one of their teams was struggling with putting a cloud together, so he showed up with a USB stick with the, with the starting X ISO, and he built a cloud in a day. So I think when it comes to the new use cases, if you can have a cloud in a day, then you have a lot of days of those weeks that otherwise you would have spent on building infrastructure to actually focus on the workloads and really enable the use cases to be what they want to be. So the project's responsibility is to put that infrastructure layer in there, uh, solid, robust, and secure. Now let's talk about the version 9 that you know that recently came out. Talk a bit about uh, what's new there, uh, if something was depreciated. So Starling X now kind of really reached that mature phase where the community can focus on really fine-tuning the platform. And we mentioned it before how Starling X is run in production by several large telcos, Verizon, Vodafone, T-Systems, just to mention a few the base for the 5G workloads. Uh, Vodafone is doing an open RAN rollout in Europe as we speak. Um, so the platform is really heavily tested in, in use cases with really high um, and tough requirements. So it has to perform, it has to be secure, it has to be robust, and it has to be really highly reliable. 
So Starting X has been delivering on these features. So now the community can look into things like what I mentioned before for AI, power consumption is something that was one of the focus uh, points of the 9.0 release cycle. So the community um, integrated a um, uh, power management um, component so uh, to make it configurable um, and have so make the uh, the resource consumption profiles configurable for the systems. So you should be able to uh, configure the frequency of the CPUs um, that are in your system. Uh, so it's down to that level within the infrastructure. The idea is to be able to regulate how much power the system is using and make sure that you're not wasting any resources. Um, the other thing that the community has been looking into is the robustness side of things in terms of geo-redundancy, for example, like being able to deploy redundant uh, central clouds and system controllers, um, rather. So if you have like a disaster recovery scenario, um, in that case, the remote sites can be reconnected to another system controller within the instant. So um, you should not have as much interruption within the system in that case. Um, there's also a very popular feature, the precision time protocol that the community uh, integrated a long time ago, and they are still adding new features to it. It's something that's important for telecoms. It's something that's important for industrial use cases or the automotive uh, use cases as well. Anywhere where you have mission critical workloads and you need very precise timing, precision time protocol is something that you will need. And um, robustness came up for, for this feature as well. So now you can configure redundant system clocks within the system. So um, again, something that enhances the reliability of the platform. Um, Starting X also now moved to the Antelope release of Open, OpenStack uh, since um, Caracal was a little cutting too, too close to, to be able to be on the very, very latest one. Um, so Starting X is on the Antelope version now, and they will keep moving uh, closer and closer to the latest release of OpenStack as uh, we will see how much they will be able to synchronize on release cycles. That's always a complicated challenge. However, Upgrading the system is something that is an ongoing focus for the community as well. I mean, Starling X itself. So the all-in-one uh, deployment type for the Kubernetes piece within that deployment type, you can now do multi-version upgrades. And since OpenStack is now um, implementing the skip level upgrade process, so you can skip a, a major release and, and jump one with OpenStack. As Starting X moves to the newer releases, it will be able to leverage that uh, for OpenStack as well. So making sure that the platform is easy to upgrade beyond just being able to uh, patch the system that is in focus for the community and they are taking a step-by-step -step approach to um, achieve that. When it comes to major releases, and you touch upon that, you know, how easy or difficult it is, and I'm asking about across Open Infra Foundation, to because at one point there was also challenge. A lot of folks they run they're running on the very old versions, you know, and they and it becomes challenging for big for a smaller. It's easy to move, but they have to look at a lot. So sometimes we have to make it easier to upgrade. So talk about not just from installing X, you know, 9.0 release update from the previous release, but for across industries, you know, sorry, across projects how easy difficult it is or is still a pain point? I think it's still a, pain point. a challenge, but I don't think it's a, it's a challenge that is specific to, to opening for projects. I think it's an industry-wide challenge because if you think about open source projects, they are usually um, the core component in someone's distribution, in someone's product. So it's one thing how easy it is to upgrade the open source project itself, but, but when companies add their sauce to it, hardening um, their opinionated way on, on how to deploy the project, how to do lifecycle management on the project, 
that becomes, again, a very complex process. So there's only so much that the open source projects themselves can do to completely solve that problem. So I, I think that is something that we need to look at as an industry and things like infrastructure as code and declarative um, ways of doing lifecycle management for infrastructure is, is becoming more and more of a theme. And I, I really love seeing that all across the industry. And for upgrades, like I mentioned, the, the skip level upgrade for OpenStack, I think that will be a big step into a direction that will make it easier for those companies who are not able to move as fast um, because of whatever reason that they might have. Telecommunication is often an example because they usually roll out a new system and then they don't touch it for a while. So the concept of patching the system is just not something that you do in the telecom industry. So being able to skip a major release and make a bigger jump, I think that will be a very useful feature for them. But at the same time, it, it's still an argument, like someone wants very frequent releases, like Kata Containers is putting out a new minor release on a roughly monthly cadence. Um, so they have a fast pace when it comes to minor releases. Starting X is more on a half year uh, release cycle for, for major releases and they do less of minor releases. However, you can make patches and patch the system. So if there's a security issue, uh, a minor fix, you should be able to patch your system. You don't have to upgrade to the next major version. So there are various ways to tackle the industry's challenge and open infra projects are um, using different methods to meet their customer, customers, their users' needs. And as you're saying, you know, when we look at the project, you know, it has matured. Now they're looking and fine tuning, fine grain improvements. Uh, 9.0 releases out. What things are in the pipeline for the next update? Um, there are things around scalability, for example, to um, make the, uh, the distributed cloud uh, deployment sizes bigger. Also being able to run more processes in parallel to make the system even more performant. Like when you have to patch a system with hundreds or thousands of nodes, that takes time. Um, Another thing to mention is diversity in hardware platforms. So companies like AMD and ARM are getting involved in the project to uh, provide support for, uh, for their hardware architectures. I think that is uh, another very exciting development um, and also looking into users' needs. So things like IPv4, IPv6, dual stack, it is still something that the industry needs um, here and there. And since that is uh, a user need, that will be something that the community is looking into in the next cycle as well. Um, unifying the way, again, back to upgrades, how you're patching, how you're upgrading your system, how you manage the uh, um, the services and the service lifecycle, the community um, is making efforts to further unify um, that part of the platform. So make the APIs simpler and easier to use. And that is another area that, that they are looking into um, for the upcoming releases. Eldiko, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, give us an update on the overall foundation, but also a starting X project as well. Thanks for the great insights. And as usual, I would love to sit down and chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me.